So we're gonna go and approach Martha or no, we already left Martha's arrest. We're heading to the Abbey. <laughs> Got that fucked up real quick. Good day to you. I'm afraid the Abbey is not open for public prayer. May Grieger go with you? We came to offer a donation. From Martha. <sighs> I see. Then please, follow me. these people Martha's bearers she entrusted them to my care that I might ease their suffering to the extent that I can for the time they have left has taken them. All of them. As it does every bearer forced to use their gift. With each draw on the ether, their bodies petrify, till all that remains is stone and pain, and so they are cast aside. There is nothing either Martha or I can do to change that, but we can at least strive to make their final hours a little more bearable. <laughs> Have faith, my son, for you shall rise again and find the happiness denied you in this life. Thank you. I must offer you my own thanks for the medicine you so kindly brought. Now that their final moments may be moments of peace. When next you see Martha, pray tell her that two more have succumbed. We should get back to Martha's rest. Yes, we should. This is an amazingly fucked up situation. Not only is the use of these people a form of slavery, but the fact that they are being forced to use their power is slowly killing them, and killing them in a very painful way. It appears as though drawing upon that power slowly petrifies their bodies and 
It doesn't kill them immediately, but it slowly, I guess, becomes more difficult for them to move. And eventually that guy seems to have suffocated. Now we've seen, definitely seen, the negative effects of using this ability on some of the dominants. Now Joshua, in the beginning of the game, would cough. He, he seemed like a sickly child, but when he used his abilities, it had like a negative impact on him. He stopped, coughed, had to rest between casting his spells. And we've seen it with Sid also. When Sid is you casting his more powerful abilities, he like coughs up blood. So even the dominants are not spared from this. But geez, the plight of these bearers just gets worse and worse the more you hear about it. It's like, oh well, they're enslaved from birth, they're forced to use this magic, and with the more and more scarce the crystals become, the more and more I'm sure their abilities are being relied on, just to do like little convenient things for the people that own them. But it slowly kills them, and doesn't seem to be any way to stop that. Like they were taken to this taken to this guy to just sort of live out the rest of their lives under sedation and yeah that's messed up you know it also seems to be that like this world is one that had a lot of technology in it at some point now the city the the not city but the spaceship or whatever airship that sid resides in is a sign of that technology and the technology in these people's world seems to largely be gone. All they have are simple machines. And I would say it's probably to do with their over-reliance on this magic power. You see people going around and using magic crystals or bearers to um, create water in a well or to cast ice magic on fish. Now there are technological solutions to that that this world is simply never going to discover because there is no need to because they have these magic crystals or they have these magic people that they can rely on to simply do it for them. If necessity really is the mother of invention, the necessity of advancement has been removed by this sort of natural, or I presume to be natural, ability to perform these feats. Now, since magic people do exist and the magic crystals do exist, I guess you're never really going to see technology advance to the point where you can take the pressure off of the bearers. In fact, historically, if you look back to actual slavery in the real world, technological advancements in some cases actually resulted in a greater burden on slaves. Like the cotton gin was an example where it may have even been intended, invented with the intention of making lives easier on slaves because it made, it, made uh, picking the seeds out of cotton easier, but it just ended up resulting in a mass expansion of the cotton picking trade, which was very labor intensive and expanded the slave trade in the United States. Ah, you're back. Thanks for taking care of that. The abbot had a message for you. Two more have succumbed. I see. Come upstairs. So, now you know, eh? I've seen plenty of bearers die on the battlefield, but never like that. And all because they were born different. The powers that be can't take away their gift, so they strip them of their humanity instead. Oh, there's plenty who pity a bearer's plight, but so long as we're content to sit around weeping for those on whose broken backs we're carried, we ain't gonna change nothing. And so you lend Sid your strength? What little of it I have. Use profits from this place to buy the poor buggers. So when the abbot told us the bearers were yours? Aye, they're my property, at least by law. Any still fit to work fetch a price beyond my means. All I can do is care for those who are past mending. But it's not all doom and gloom. 
Bernard's finished fixing that bridge for you. You can carry on to Eastpool now. You've got questions that need answering, ain't you? Well, I wish you luck. Thank you, Martha. Oh, I almost forgot. Sid and I have other friends in Rosaria. Wear this and they'll know you for one of us. And know that you will always be welcome here. You were right, Sid. It really is them. Lord Rosfield and Lady Warwick have come back to us. And long may they stay. Sid. Ah, Clive. You're not where I left you. Hurt your hand. I did, I. With a thousand little lightning bolts. Can't fling them around the way I used to. Think of it as my decoration for long service and exemplary misconduct. come here to compare war wounds. We didn't. Thank you, Sid. For everything. <laughs> if you want to leave, that's your lookout. I'm sure you'll have a long and happy life together if you stay out of my way. Sid! <laughs> oh. yeah. I knew a girl, back in the day. She was a slave to her fate, just like you. I wanted to save her. For a while, I even thought I could. But just because you think something doesn't make it true. Sid. Saviour. Just a conceited old fool. I talk about people forging their own futures, but instead of handing them the hammer, I beat them with my own. And if no bugger wants to listen to what you've got to say, you might as well keep your gob shut. But Clive, I will say this. a monster. You're the same man you've always been. Accept that, and you may yet escape your fate. My fate? Look, lad, you've had a hard life. And I don't see it getting much easier. You might not be able to save anyone else. But at the very least, you can save yourself. <laughs> I'll try. And Jill. I'm sorry we didn't get a chance to talk, but I trust you'll take good care of the boy. Yes, I will. Is that the last of it? Aye. We'd best head back then. Wouldn't want to keep Nan waiting. Ta-ra then. <laughs> 